Possibility number two for a perfectly competitive firm in the short run, or condition number two, is to earn normal or zero economic profits, which is the same thing as breaking even. Um, remember, what this means is that all the firm's implicit costs um, and explicit costs of production are covered. So this, uh, this break-even possibility is a perfectly acceptable place to to be and to remain um, indefinitely because you're you're covering all your explicit and implicit costs. So again, the market is what sets the price um, that the producer has to has to offer their product for sale at. But um, we're just going to kind of work backwards to to prove how this works and just make sure you understand. So on your sheet in the practice problem packet, go ahead and draw in uh, Mr. Darp for the firm, again, which is set by the market, at the price of $92. So when you draw in your Mr. Darp, you're going to pay close attention to make sure that your Mr. Darp intersects marginal cost and average total cost here at the base of the average total cost curve. All right, and now to identify the profit maximizing level of output for this uh, for this producer, just identify the quantity where MR equals MC or where Mr. Darp crosses the marginal cost curve there. And in the graph in your practice problem packet, that's at approximately seven units of output. And in this situation, the reason that we know this firm is breaking even based on the price given by the market is that average revenue at the profit maximizing level of output is equal to average total cost. So there's nothing left over. Um, you're not making profits or, or experiencing any losses. So you're just breaking even. All right, possibility number three, or condition number three, is to produce in the short run in order to minimize losses. So in this situation, the producer is losing money. Um, but if they went out of business immediately and decided to just cease production and close their doors right now, um, they would actually lose more money than if they continue to produce in the short run um, to try to chip away at some of their fixed cost of production until they can get out of their fixed cost commitments. So um, in certain situations it actually makes sense for firms to produce even though they're losing money. Now they don't want to do this forever but um, they'll do it for a certain period of time until they can either get out of their fixed cost commitments and exit the market or until you know things change in their favor because obviously you don't want to lose money forever but go ahead and um, in the practice problem sheet on the graph draw in a Mr. Darp at around eighty dollars um, so you'll notice that your Mr. Darp is um, in between average total and average variable cost or marginal cost crisis and the profit maximizing level of output there where MR equals MC is going to be at approximately six units of output on your on your graph in the packet and what you'll notice here is that average revenue is less than average total cost but greater than average variable cost at the profit maximizing level of output um, so the losses that this firm um, is experiencing are less than the losses the firm would experience if they shut down immediately because when you shut down you still have to pay your fixed cost commitments until you can get out of them so again this firm is losing money but losing less than they would lose if they shut down immediately so anytime average revenue is less than average total cost you're losing money but if it's if your average revenue is greater than average variable cost um, it still makes sense to produce in the short run All right, and possibility number four for this perfectly competitive firm in uh, short-run production is to go ahead and shut down immediately. Um, this is only going to happen if uh, things are so bad <laughs> that they, uh, you know, would be better off just ceasing production. And so in your graph, in the practice problem packet, go ahead and draw in a Mr. Darp at approximately $70. Um, you'll notice that the profit maximizing level of output where MR equals MC 
um, in the graph in the practice problem packet is at approximately five units of output because remember firms are always going to produce in the upward sloping portion of their marginal cost curve so that's why you don't look um, over in the downward sloping portion of marginal cost um, so you would think that the profit maximizing level of output in this situation is five units of output um, but since average revenue is less than average variable cost the small purple shaded area here shows the losses in excess of fixed costs. So what this means is that if this firm produces in this situation and produces their five units of output, they will lose this much more money than if they shut down, went out of business immediately, and just continued to pay their fixed costs until they could get out of those fixed cost commitments. So these losses are in excess of their fixed costs. Therefore, this firm's better off ceasing production, and their profit maximizing level of output is actually zero because when they stop producing, they will just pay their fixed costs and and not more than their fixed costs because here they can't even cover their variable cost of production. So if a firm can't even cover their variable cost of production they're better off not producing just remember that alright now we've looked a lot at um, the demand curves that these firms face in the short run based on the price that the market sets for for the product um, but let's take a look at, at the firm's short run supply curve just to identify where that is so we know that um, the profit maximizing level of output is going to be wherever Mr. DARP crosses the marginal cost curve, where MR equals MC. So the supply curve is, um, is really the marginal cost curve because it's going to be some point on the marginal cost curve where we're going to find our quantity of output. Now, if price is greater than average total cost, the firm will produce indefinitely because they're making economic profits. So that's that's a good situation to be in, so that's definitely part of their supply curve. Um, and if the firm is losing money, but at least able to cover their variable costs of production, um, then the firm will, we just learned, continue to produce in the short run because they're better off than, than ceasing production immediately. But if price or average revenue is below average variable cost, we know that the firm is going to shut down immediately. So therefore, the firm's short run supply curve, oops, I flipped too fast, um, really is just this area um, of the marginal cost curve at an above average variable cost. Um, at the point where marginal cost meets average variable cost, that is known as the shutdown point. And technically, the firm would be indifferent at that point, um, whether they want to produce or not. Um, if it were me, and I knew that I could lay on the couch and watch TV all day, or work all day, and have the exact same result, I would probably lay on the couch. So I'd probably shut down at that shutdown point. But um, definitely any point below the shutdown point, the firm is, is definitely not. And that brings us to the end of, um, of our short run perfect competition lecture, or both parts of the lecture, I should say. So what you need to come away with understanding today is the characteristics of a perfectly competitive market, um, understanding the relationship between the market and the individual producers or firms in the industry, um, and then finally the four short-run scenarios that this firm may 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 find um, themselves in, depending on the price you know that the market sets for them, whether they're earning profits, breaking even, producing in the short run to minimize losses, or or shutting down immediately. Um, one final thing I want to mention is that. In perfectly competitive markets, um, as we mentioned in the beginning, there are so, so, so many producers. So, so, so many producers, we can't even count them all. And so, um, keep in mind that these representative firms that we're seeing as we look at side-by-side -side graphs really are just one representative out of hundreds or thousands of producers in the industry. Um, I once heard an analogy that if you wanted to imagine a perfectly competitive market, um, you could imagine it like ants that were faced with the task of filling up a barrel with saliva. Now this is kind of funny, but hang with me here. The ants, you know, would have to take turns and it would take them forever to spit in this barrel and try to fill the barrel up with saliva. And if one ant dropped out of the line or a couple more ants joined the line, 
you know, it would really not impact the speed at which that big barrel got filled up with ant saliva. And so that's kind of how you can think about perfect competition. There are so many producers, one or two leaving or coming back in, they just, they really don't have an impact on, um, on things in the market or the market price. That's why the market is what sets the price and the producers are so inconsequential they just have to deal with what um, what is given to them the price that's given to them and so they just have to figure out where you know where they find themselves if they're earning money breaking even losing money or if they should just shut down and then they just have to they just have to deal with it so all right we're gonna wrap her up thanks a lot